Hi, I'm George Mariner Moore, Artistic Director of the Discovery Orchestra, and welcome to Notes from Under the Piano, stories from my life as a musician, conductor, and teacher. It all began when, as a child, I liked to recline under our grand piano as my mother practiced, and the rest, as they say. Lead sponsors for Notes from Under the Piano are Judy Musicant and Hugh Clark and the Kozlowski Family Foundation. Major sponsors are David and Ellen Williams. Today's episode, The Good News. In 1960, when I was 13 years old, I left St. Peter's Choir School for Boys in Philadelphia to enter my local public school, the Abraham Lincoln Combined Junior and Senior High School, populated by 5,000 students, grades 8 through 12. It was a shock on many levels. After being with just 45 other boys for four years, the presence of girls, for starters, was among the interesting differences. The sheer number of students was sometimes a source of terror. I'd never been in a building with so many other kids every day. But the biggest surprise of all occurred one afternoon during lunch. I ventured out of the cafeteria, down the corridor toward the music wing of the complex. Lincoln High School had a two-story wing for music classrooms, offices, practice rooms, and two large rehearsal spaces, all of this connected by corridors to the auditorium. The choirs, bands, and orchestras, yes, there were two of each, could make noise to their heart's content without disturbing any academic classrooms. What had caught my attention was the finale of Dvorak's Symphony No. 9 from the New World, emanating from one of those classrooms. It was not the music itself that was so intriguing. After all, the New World Symphony was the music that had propelled me into the after Dvorak period of my life that continues to this day. No, it was the fact that not a peep of student noise could be detected coming from that classroom. I was keenly aware of the kind of negativity about classical music among my peers in my Philadelphia neighborhood. Yet, these students were obviously sitting in total silence. Had someone bound and gagged them? Why weren't they talking and throwing paper airplanes or spitballs at each other? I sat down on the floor outside the door to listen. Then, Dr. Saul Feinberg appeared and said, might you be more comfortable sitting in a chair? So I took a seat in the back of the classroom as this powerful music poured out of the large wall-mounted speakers. This music teacher, I thought to myself, must be some kind of magician. Here's how Dr. Feinberg and I looked in the 1960s. Because I was drafted as a member of both the junior and senior high school choirs, I was actually exempt from taking Dr. Feinberg's perceptive listening course, as he called it. During the 1960s, the Pennsylvania State School curriculum still required everyone in grades eight and nine to have two weekly 45-minute periods of general music. What general music may have consisted of in many schools, I don't know. But Saul Feinberg had taken this curriculum requirement and turned it into something very special indeed. Over the numerous lunch periods I spent auditing Saul's class, I observed and absorbed a great deal and later became one of Saul's piano students. It's certainly safe to say that I learned everything I know about teaching music listening from Saul. By this point in his life, he had already asked and answered two important questions. Was it beneficial for a person to learn to listen to classical music? And if so, what could be done to encourage this behavior? The creation of a course to do just that for teenage students formed the basis of Saul's doctoral dissertation. Saul carefully documented his work using anonymous surveys of student opinion. This survey was given at the beginning of the academic year and again an identical one at the end of each school year. Over the course of two semesters, he would take a group of typical Lincoln High School students with about 95% of them having negative attitudes toward classical music at the beginning of the school year and facilitate a 180 degree positive attitudinal turnaround 
for 70% of his students year after year after year. It was nothing short of miraculous. It truly was good news. Today, Saul Feinberg's problem-solving method informs the Discovery Orchestra's mission and approach to teaching the music listening skills that help people really emotionally connect with classical music. Through our Discovery Chat videos on YouTube and the national broadcasts of our Discovery concerts on public television stations, the Discovery Orchestra hopes to emulate the success of Dr. Feinberg and, as he did over his long teaching career, make a real difference in the lives of countless individuals.